Hey and welcome back to another video. Now in this video within this course, I don't want to just dive straight into the networking and UI code. Instead, I want to talk a bit more about theory in terms of what a REST API is. So when you're actually working on a you know take home test and they say that you need to interact with an API, you more than likely will have to work with some data when building your take home project since this is what is going to help build up your app. Now this is why I want to discuss this topic a bit more. Now normally when you work with a take home test, you will have to interact with some kind of REST API where you get data and display it on the screen. In fact, if you actually break down a lot of iOS apps, you'll find that a lot of them at their core are simply just a list of information coming back from some kind of service. So as you can see on the screen here, this is Twitter and these tweets are not released every single app release these tweets actually come back from some kind of service that is actually you know hosted on some kind of like server or cloud instance or whatever that may be now in this video we're going to discuss and talk about rest apis and the concepts that we can go through here could actually come up as an interview question so you may want to take note also this will help you gain a deeper understanding into how networking works and all the different keywords that you should actually know and what they mean so let's get straight into it so what does a rest api actually mean well rest api is actually broken into two parts the first part is rest which actually means representational state transfer and it's a software architecture that was designed to help apps interact with web services these programs usually run on some kind of server and when looking at the second part the api this stands for application programming interface and what this is the set of protocols that you can use to interact and use some kind of application software an api is basically a black box you don't know what the actual code is to make it work but you do know that you can call certain definitions within it, interact with it think of it like a delivery service app you don't know how uber eats work behind the scenes but they provide you with all the tools to easily order a big map so now we know the backstories of rest apis what are they actually used for well, when you're building apps, you need to display data dynamically and it needs to be up to date. Let's look at our mock-up here where we have a list of people. Imagine if we wanted to add a new user every time someone filled out our contact form. It just wouldn't be sustainable to do an app release every time we need to add a new person. So instead, we can interact with an API similar to the request API, which is what we'll be using. This API will provide us with ways to directly fetch all the users that the service has stored, most likely in a database on a server, and we can easily create users too as well. So now we can easily create and fetch users to display them in our UI. So when you actually work with an API, you'll normally get a URL that looks like this. Now this is the URL that you're used to interact with the API, but it's actually broken up into two parts here. So the first part of the URL is what we call the base URL. Now this is the root of the API. In order to interact with the API, you need to use the base URL to access its resources. The next part is the endpoint. So this is the endpoint where we go to the request API and you'll actually see when we actually go through the next set of videos, all the different endpoints that you can use to actually access different resources that the API offers. So you can see here that the base URL always stays the same, but the endpoint that we're going to be using can change depending on the type of action that we want to perform. So if we want to get users, we call this API. If we want to create users, this endpoint might actually be something completely different. So keep that in mind when you're working with base URLs and endpoints. Just before we move on to the next section, let's actually look at an example of this within the API that we'll be working with. So this is the API that we're going to be working with for this take home project. And if I actually scroll down, you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different endpoints that we can use to perform different actions. So I can actually call this endpoint to get a list of all users on page two. I can use this endpoint to get a single user. You can see here that we have different endpoints where we can actually get a list of users or get a specific user. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that you actually have an endpoint called API slash users and the keyword here, get. But if you go to create, you also have the exact same endpoint, but this time it says post. So what's the difference between these two and what do these keywords mean? Well, let's actually look into that now. So when you work with an API, there's something called a request method. And this is essentially you telling the API 
how you want to interact with it. So depending on the method that you use, the API will treat the request kind of differently in terms of how it handles the data. So let's actually just look at the most common request methods that you can use when interacting with an API. So the first one is get. Now get genuinely means that this is when you want to fetch data from an API. So nine times out of 10, if you want to fetch data from a service, this is going to be the default or most common method used. You also have post. This is generally used to send data to an API. And let's say you need to submit data to an API. It can be created using a post. You also have put. This is generally used to update data within an API. So let's say someone wants to update their details and you don't want to have to get you know, the data and then post it. So you don't want to perform two actions. You can actually do that in one, just using put. We also have delete as well. And this is generally when you want to delete data in an API. So let's say someone wants to delete their account, you can use this method to remove an account. So all these methods allow you to interact with APIs in different ways. So now that we've gone over the APIs in terms of how they differ with different request methods, you're actually also able to send a request body alongside the data. So what we can do is also send data alongside our request. For example, let's say we're sending a post request and we need to also tell the API what data it should use to create a user. This is where the request body comes in. It allows us to send data with a request so that the API can process it and handle it and return some kind of response based on the data it's received. So when you actually send a network request as well, the API will also give you feedback as to how successful that request was. So when you work with an API, the request you need some kind of feedback to tell you that everything was okay. This is where status codes come in. A status code is a unique code that has been agreed and defined to have a specific meaning. Some examples of this would mean if it was between 200 and 300, that means that the request that you made was okay. But let's say for example, if the number was a four, begin with a four, so it's higher than 300, this usually indicates back to you that something has gone wrong. So some common examples of this is 200 means okay. 201 would mean that the resource was successfully created and 404 would mean that the item you're requesting doesn't actually exist so the API you're calling doesn't exist yet. So after executing the request the API will respond to you with some form of code. This code is what's used to you as a developer to tell you whether what you tried was successful or not. So we spoke about sending data, but now I want to talk more about what that actually means and what it looks like, you know, what it is in the next video where we can discuss how we actually send data using something called JSON. So if you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up as well as leaving a comment if you appreciate it and want to give some feedback. Also as well, if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it. If you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell, get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.